Hey guys, welcome to CSI. I had a couple of games of CSI and this is actually the first one uh, that I got in my hand that actually worked. I have another one, Deadly Intent, after this one. I will see if I can play it, but the other two I have... Yeah, they do just don't work. I installed them, I tried them and uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's... They are actually quite old, I don't know. Um, yeah, they are actually very old. <laughs> but hey, let's let's see uh, first case. Uh, flesh baked. Well, that uh, sounds very appetizing. So let's go. The place was called Superla Spa. It was a full-service establishment. Massage tables, salon chairs, mud baths, etc. The explosion went off a little after three. A squad car was two blocks away when the place went up, so the fire department was able to respond within four minutes. Not that it helped. The place was fully engulfed by the time they arrived. They were just lucky to keep it contained to just this building. I didn't know there was a spa down here. The building's been here since the late 70s, but it's only been a spa since 98. The gentleman in the corner there is Pete Baja. His company owns the Pearl Spa. I took his statement, but you'll want to follow up with him too. Have you two met yet? Not officially. I'm Sarah Seidel. The team speaks very highly of you. You want to take that interview? This is the CSI tutorial. You can turn it off at any time by selecting the option on the tutorial window and enable it again from the options menu. The cursor is used to both navigate and to... Yeah, we, we don't want that. <laughs> so yeah, no pressure. Let's see. Can we actually... One mud bath contains a lot more mud than the others. It might just be the way they do it. But the one next to it is filled only up to the line on the side of the tub. That mud is baked solid. We're going to need a way to examine it inside and out, without actually breaking it up and compromising potential evidence. You know, the other day, Catherine was telling me that we have access to an industrial ultrasound device. It sounds perfect for this problem. I'll give her a call. Oh yeah, this sounds so wrong. <laughs> Let's see first before uh, asking questions. Popcorn style ceiling. Hold your breath while you're taking that sample. If it's as old as it looks, it's probably got asbestos in it. Okay, everybody out of the of the building. <laughs> this thing was on last night, we could have our ignition source. It's hard to tell what this was. Not much left of it. Judging from the charring in the inside of the oven, it was in there for long enough to catch fire. It's almost like a timed fuse. That could indicate arson, but we'll need a lot more evidence to prove it. Well, it doesn't look uh, very tasty to me. <laughs> yeah, I think we we have everything here. I think yeah, that's the the ceiling. That's yeah, I think we have everything here. Here is the mud bed. Uh, do we any have anything here? Oh yeah, just talk to me. Hi, Pedro Baja, Baja, like Baja California. 
But call me Pete. Everyone does. Well, almost everyone. You in charge of this place, Pete? I'm the CEO of Miel LLC. It's less impressive than it sounds. It's basically a holding company for a few mom-and-pop style businesses that were worth rescuing when the original owners wanted out. The company owns Super La Spa. What's left of it? Hmm. We'll have to notify the claims adjuster when we've released the scene. Actually, this is kind of embarrassing, but the policy on this place has lapsed. Oh, snap. Did the fire insurance and one of your businesses expire? It's complicated. We sent them a payment, but they said they didn't get it. Then they wanted us to pay a late fee and raise our premium. I mean, we've done business with them for years, and now they decide to penalize us over a little slip-up? A little slip-up? <laughs> Man, you don't have to be much of an accountant uh, to know. <sighs> Insurance, you always need to pay directly. That's... Uh... You know, every time you, you don't have an insurance payment out, uh, then it's it's always always things happen when you you don't have the you don't have uh, insurance. That's always the matter. <laughs> I have some things I need to take care of. Here's my card. At least until the next board meeting. You can reach me at my office. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, we're living in the future. I'm still waiting for my flying car, but Seeing through walls isn't too shabby. I have a rough idea, but remind me again how the device works. Just turn it on and point the wand at whatever you want to scan. The sound waves it emits penetrate at different speeds depending on the density of the material. And the onboard computer translates that into a picture, is that right? You got it. I don't think I need to tell you to be careful with it, but be careful with it. Yeah, just don't break it. Oh, that's not good. That ain't good. That ain't good. Hello. <laughs> Does that look like a human body to you? It, well, it looks ain't, like it ain't we the habit, man. After all, I'll call Doc Robbins for a pickup. Cleaning her off is just the first step. This is going to take a while. I'll give you a call when I have something for you. Let's head back to the crime scene. See what else we can turn up. Damn. You'll have to forgive me. Baking the victim in mud and then exhuming her aren't exactly the ingredients for the most efficient autopsy. I'll give you a call when I have something for you. So, nothing here anymore. Uh, let's see, location, um, this is the crime scene, did we add, have everything here? Uh, let's see, let's see, oh yeah, I, I remember this game, this was a pain in the ass to, to steer all of the time, um, casting, this is for small uh, things, I think this is the uh, better thing, yep. Look at how it's burned away from its frame. Drywall is usually fire resistant. Those holes could be there to let more air fan the fire and get to that wooden frame underneath. So far, that's two things that point to arson. We'll need more evidence to be sure. Hmm. Well, well, I think our uh, Mr. Baha is ve uh, very suspicious as of now. <laughs> uh, let's see. We should take samples of soot from all around this place to see if we can find traces of an accelerant. Is this... Yeah, we, we got this. Uh, can we hear? Hmm. I think if we can get one more sample of soot after this one, we'll have enough. Wait, can we... Oh yeah, we can move here. Uh, let's see. Oh. Hmm. 
Look at the crimping along the edges of the split gas line. I'd say it was cut. That's the third sign of possible arson we found. I'm almost convinced. Yeah, this this isn't looking good for uh, for that man. <laughs> If you have one suspicious thing, fine. There, there is, there can always be an explanation. But uh, three, yeah, th that's, yeah, <laughs> that's not really possible. But we, we really need one more. Uh, hmm. Let's see. There is one more uh, sample we need to take, and where is it? Uh, not the oven, not the asbestos. Uh, we did take one here, yep, that's the one we did. Uh, the fridge, no. Uh, let's see, hmm. Uh, this one we, we, we have, don't we? Yep, 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 yep. Uh, oh, 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 oh. We can actually move here. Is something here? Uh, let's see. Uh, no. Hmm. I feel like I'm overlooking something. Hmm. Uh, mail. Where is mail? Uh, no. Oh yeah, mail. Yeah, we know. Uh, wait. How can I? There you go. We need one uh, suit uh, place more. Hmm. Let's see. Normally. Oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Uh, yeah. There, there was one place we need more. Uh, there you go. We've gathered soot from all over this place. Should be enough. There you go. Location search. Yeah, it was actually normally here because uh, this room we had, this room we had, and this room we had. So we have everything here. Best thing to do is not. Uh, yeah, let's go to the uh, to the lab. Hmm. Data lab and material lab. Uh, let's see material. Hmm. Ah oh man, I hate this with the with the arrows. The evidence what do we have yep the asbestos uh, let's see oh yeah this is how it uh, it worked uh, you have to select uh, the beams uh, yep and another one it's primarily calcium sulfate and asbestos that explains why the ceiling didn't burn Do we have anything else? Uh, evidence. Oh yeah, the the cake. Let's see. <laughs> uh, what's this? Uh, nope. Nope. That's the one. And one more here. What is it? What is it? There's quite a bit of carbon from where it burned, but there's also wheat flour, tapioca starch, and sodium carboxymethylcellulose. What I'm not seeing are any animal proteins. You know what? I think this is a vegan pastry of some kind. A muffin from the size of it. Oh, I'm not gonna eat it, that's for sure. 
Let's see the suits. What's gonna be this? Um, yep. Nope, not this one. This one and confirm. The soot from the break room contains carbon, acetone, and T-butyl mercaptan. That's the odorant they use in natural gas. Acetone is sometimes used as an accelerant. We should test the rest of the soot we've collected. And then probably uh, see if they actually uh, match up uh, with each other. Uh, this one, this one, and the one small one here. Lots of carbon some acetone, and trace amounts of T-butyl mercaptan. That's the second sample of soot to contain acetone. Let's keep analyzing the soot samples we've collected. I think we're onto something. Hmm. Uh, search. Uh, not, not this one, I think. No, this one and this one. There you go. It's mostly carbon but there are traces of volcanic minerals and acetone. The mud at the spa is made of volcanic ash, but the acetone is an anomaly. We have acetone, a known accelerant, in samples of soot taken from every room in the spa. We've got a gas leak that looks to be the result of tampering. The drywall here has been ventilated to get around its natural fireproofing. And then there's this acetone residue over every inch of the place. Throw a muffin in the toaster oven at 450 degrees. Then just leave it in there without setting the timer. Sounds like a recipe for arson. Hey there, it's Dr. Robbins. Just wanted to let you know I've completed the autopsy on your burn victim. Well, there you go. Uh, did we have anything else? Uh, we'd uh, business card. Oh yeah, I know what we can do with this business card. I know what we can do with this business card. Um, wait, 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 wait. Need, need to select it. Uh, wait, where is it? Uh, yep. <laughs> it was nice oh, yeah. of Mr. Baja to give us his fingerprint like that. Uh, let's see what did we yeah, we can we can't do anything with this um, hmm don't think we can do anything with this too uh, we have to have reference I think um, wait uh, DNA can we do anything with no 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 We can't use this machine, can we? Um, let's see. Yeah. You, you don't have to uh, be in a smart ass to, to know who sponsored this one. <laughs> uh, Reset evidence. Hmm. Oh yeah, we can't uh, search here, so... We actually need some uh, uh, proof uh, with us, documents, uh, comparison. Yeah, we, we, oh, we also need the, you, you have to uh, have two uh, samples before anything. Um, data lab, Let, let's see the victim. Uh, location, uh, Dr. Roberts. Hmm. Can we actually take a picture? No, we can't. Oh, hey well. Doc, we got your call. All right, let's begin. Well, her bikini probably left no room for imagination, nor an ID, but I did collect her fingerprints and DNA for you. Thank you. Take a look at the third degree burns on your victim's hands and face. You can probably tell that they were above the surface of the mud during the initial explosion and subsequent fire. In addition to the burns to her skin, she suffered thermal injury to her upper airway. She inhaled a substantial amount of smoke and hot gases from the fire. Carboxyhemoglobin levels in her blood exceeded 73%. Cause of death was suffocation due to carbon monoxide poisoning. In a fire that intense, carbon monoxide levels would spike rapidly. She probably fell unconscious pretty quick. 
Most likely, she slipped under the mud after losing consciousness. Time of death is going to be difficult to determine. Even without the fire, the initial temperature of the mud bath complicates my ability to offer an accurate estimate. I was able to extract samples of the vitreous humor from both eyes. Potassium accumulation in the tissue indicates time of death between 3 and 4 a.m. That's consistent with when the fire started. Not exactly, but take a look at this bruising on her arm. Does that look like a handprint to you? Yeah, looks like someone grabbed her pretty hard. From the coloration of the bruising, I'd say it occurred at least 6 to 12 hours prior to death. I certainly find no indication she was lying in that mud over a prolonged period of time. We need to get a photo of those bruises. My camera's memory card is full. You mind documenting this one? I'll wait. Well, ain't that convenient. <laughs> uh, let's see this one. Uh, where is those camera? Yep. Nice composition. Uh, do we have anything else? Uh, nope. Maybe. Your victim had advanced mesothelioma. It's a type of cancer that attacks the lining of the vital organs. It's thought to be caused most often by exposure to asbestos. It looks as though it was an ongoing problem for her. I discovered indications of a pleurectomy, the removal of the outermost lining of the lungs. From the scar tissue, that surgery probably took place a few years ago. She may have thought she was out of the woods. Unfortunately, I found an active malignancy in her pericardium, the lining of her heart. She didn't have long to live. You know, we found some asbestos at the crime scene. The whole ceiling was coated with it. There was even a corner of the break room where it had come down. You don't suppose our victim set the fire, do you? Revenge and suicide all in one? We'll have to ask Brass if she filed any kind of complaint. Hmm. So we have possibly two uh, people that can that could have started the fire. Well, the pleurectomy obviously suggests at one point she knew she had cancer. But there's no way to know whether she was aware it had recently metastasized to her heart. I ran an expanded tox screen. She hadn't been taking any cancer medications, and I didn't find any tissue damage from possible radiation treatments. I did, however, find evidence of a persistent, dare I say, habitual use of cannabis. You know, a Harvard Medical School study concluded that one of the active chemicals in marijuana, THC, may in fact inhibit the growth of certain tumor classifications. Even though it says right there in the press release that the growth of some other tumors might actually be accelerated by THC. A man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest, right? So now the idea that weed cures cancer is spreading far and wide. <laughs> Anytime. Well, that's always the case. People always want uh, to hear what they want to hear. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> hmm. But that's gonna be an episode, guys. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, sub for more. And uh, see you later. Bye, guys.